Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we're going to be talking about three different ways to plant potatoes from containers to in ground. Before we plant a potato, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. If you take a close look at the potato, you can see it has these little bumps. These are called the eyes. That's where the sprout emerges. So right here is an example of a sprout that's going to be the potato plant itself. So when you're planting your potatoes, you have a few different options on how to deal with this. And I'll show you really quickly how you would split the potato and how you would actually get the sprout to form. So the way you actually get these potatoes to sprout beforehand, which is optional technically, is you wanna put them in a semi-sunny spot. I put them in my mudroom on the windowsill where they get a little bit of sun throughout the day. And that was just enough to get these guys to sprout. Now, if you have a big potato with many eyes, I'm talking one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six different eyes on it, you can actually split this potato to get double the amount of potato from your potato. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a knife, cut it down the middle, and now I have at least one, two, three eyes on this potato here. And on this one, I have quite a bit. So those eyes will now form new plants, and I've now doubled my harvest from that same potato. What I have in this dish here is a little bit of wood ash. You wanna take your potato, and just dip it in there. This is also optional, not really needed, but that little bit of wood ash has potassium, which helps it root, and also will just help it scab over a little bit faster. So now we can actually go plant these potatoes out. I've prepared the soil now, and all it is is a mixture of basically 50-50 potting mix with a nice compost. That'll provide it enough nutrients to grow throughout the season, and the water retention that we need for growing in a container. So the first way we're gonna plant these potatoes is in this 10 gallon grow bag. So let's go ahead and fill this with soil first. To fill my containers, I actually like to push my wheelbarrow backwards. This allows me an easy way to fill my container up with soil without having to sort of guide it in with the little front end. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just put maybe three inches or so of the soil mix. And then I'll bring you in a little closer and show you exactly how I place these potatoes in. I'll take this moment as I'm laying out these potatoes to mention that they are technically indeterminate and determinate potatoes, but really they're just a long season versus short season potato. So this potato in here that I'm putting in is the Baltic Rose, and this is a mid-season potato. A mid-season potato is one that develops earlier on in the season and actually doesn't really require any hilling. So I filled this up to three inches, and now we're going to just backfill it. In this 10 gallon bag, I have three potatoes. Realistically, I should probably only put one to two, but I'm going to be actually running a few different trials here where I have this bag with three, another bag with two, and another bag with one of the same variety to see what difference there really is. So again, this is a mid-season, any earlier mid-season potato, you could just plant all the way in. You don't have to worry about hilling up. So I'm just going backfill it entirely, and then we'll mulch it at a later time. But now let's go to method number two. Method number two pretty much starts off the same way with a 10 gallon grow bag. We're gonna fill it with about three inches of soil here. Now that we have our three inches of soil in, we're going to put in our next potato. This is actually a different variety that's called Charlotte. This is a potato that does really well in containers as a favorite of Elliot Coleman, who is a very well-known organic gardener slash farmer, I should say. Now, what you wanna do is the exact same thing. We're gonna take our three potatoes. We're gonna place them at the bottom here. And now the difference is, is that we're going to actually bury them, but we're only going to bury them with about two inches or so of soil. As those sprouts emerge and start poking themselves out of the soil and get about two to three inches up above the soil, I'll go ahead and bury it so there's only one inch remaining. And I'll keep doing this until I get to the top of the container. Let's go ahead and use this plant tag as an example of how you would help a potato. So if you see up to here, that's about three inches of growth. What you're gonna do is just get your soil and literally just fill it up until that last little bit of plant is actually poking out. And then you wanna let it grow again. And then the cycle repeats until you get to the top of the pot. This works well for potatoes that are mid to late season because they grow for a longer period of time and can actually benefit from setting more tubers from healing up. The earlier potato, which was the mid season potato, we didn't really develop any new tubers by continuously hilling up. So it's really just fill it up once and you're done. So for method number two, we're going to be hilling up. Now let's move on to method number three, which is probably my favorite. This next method is probably my favorite because of its beauty and its simplicity. And it's called the root stuff method for growing potatoes. All you need is a bale of straw or hay. And the best thing about it is it can even be a spoiled sort of rotted hay product like this one, which are straw bales that were left over from a pumpkin patch and are just not really suitable for much anything else. So I was able to get these for only like $8 each, which was quite the bargain. So all it involves is spreading out your straw. I'm gonna go ahead and break this up and then we'll talk about what the next step is. One of my favorite things about this method is it's actually entirely no dig. 
And we'll show you exactly what that means in a moment. But for now, I'm gonna finish breaking up the straw. The next potato we're planting is Sarpomira. This is actually a potato that's very popular in Europe. Apparently it's a heavy setter and it's extremely delicious. It was originally reserved for royalty. So that's how you know it's good. So the root stout method, this is where the beauty really comes in. We've laid down that first layer of straw on top of this bed, which just had some compost on top of it. I haven't really grown anything in it for about a month. So all I'm going to do is take my potato, make a little gap in the straw here, and just put it right there on the surface of the soil. And that's it. All we're going to do after that is take a bunch of straw and bury it over. And as that potato grows, we'll keep adding straw on top of it. In this case, it's not necessarily to hill it up to develop more tubers, but as the potatoes grow, they will begin to start setting outside the straw and you don't want any sun on your potatoes because then they turn green. That technically makes them toxic. So what we're going to do is right now, lay out all these potatoes right onto the surface. Here are the first potatoes we put down. So they're about roughly a little bit close to a foot apart. And that's all we're going to do is we cleared the straw. I'll show you right here. You clear the straw until you get down to the dirt, you grab your potato, and then you simply just put it right on the surface. Now you could dig it in slightly if you're a little bit concerned, but it's not really necessary because the straw is going to be acting as the entire growing medium for this potato. The beauty of the straw is that once we harvest these potatoes, all this straw will be very broken down and it's going to be create this wonderful rich soil and also make it very easy to collect the potatoes. In all other methods where you bury the potato in the ground, you then have to dig it all up, ruins the soil structure, and also just is really hard to find all those potatoes. If you plant them once, you're probably gonna have them forever because you're never going to find every single seed. So this is the really beautiful thing about it is that once you're done putting it in the ground, you just take your straw. I have another sheath of straw right here, and you're just going to bury it. Now, as this potato emerges, you'll start seeing it grow and create leaves. You're gonna just wanna continuously add more straw to make sure that none of those potatoes are exposed to any sun and you'll have the easiest potato harvest you'll ever have. And you'll also be left with incredibly rich soil for in this case, spring for me. We've got a couple more potatoes to plant, but that's it for these methods. I will be running all these different experiments I mentioned, such as burying them entirely, putting multiple potatoes versus only one potato in a grow bag. So if you wanna see what the results for that is, make sure you subscribe and follow because I will definitely be posting a follow-up video to these three methods to show you guys exactly what you get in the end. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.